put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Hellboy Moon Review. The movie opens, as I think we can all agree that every movie should, with black Nazi magic. The Nazis are opening a portal to other dimensions, and through it comes something very red with horns and a tail. Now you might be thinking that, you know, clearly it's, you know, it's not just of the devil, it probably is the devil. But, it's, you know, the size of a cat and it doesn't look that evil, plus it likes, you know, chocolate bars. So a young Professor Broom decides that, you know, maybe we can raise it to serve good. And, you know, you have the whole nature-nurture debate right there. Flash forward, you know, until present day, and the, well this time, you know, it's no longer the Nazis, but it was the people helping the Nazis with it. The, well, Rasputin, who you might have heard of, I think it's supposed to be the historical one at least, I'm not that familiar with the Russian history, but yeah. And... This, you know, a German chick, I think, I think she's German, she might be Russian, I don't know. you know, either way, she has an accent and she's kinda hot. And the badassery that is Cronin, who, I I'm not gonna give away his backstory, but, yeah, he, he, he's pretty good with Blades, and if you watch this movie and don't find him awesome, you probably just don't at all care about, you know, sword fighting and that kind of thing, because, yeah, every single time he appears, he does something really cool. Now, how to fight this? Well, in the meantime, Hellboy, as he is now known, the red little thing, has grown up, although he grows slower, so he's roughly 20, even though it's been, you know, 60 years, and he and his mentor, an aging Professor Broom, and the fish being Abe Sapien, are, you know, members of the, what was it, Paranormal Research and Defense League, something like that. The Bureau for something, yeah. And they... Well, when something goes bump in the night, they bump back, as Broom puts it. And, yeah, excuse me, they're going to figure out what's going on and try to put a stop to it. This is one of the very, very good, in fact, downright great superhero adaptations, you know, su superhero movies. Part of the fun of Hellboy is that, yes, he's a demon from, you know, yeah, another dimension and, you know, that whole thing, but his maturity is like, yeah, he's like a kid, actually. He's petulant and you know, makes these rash decisions, and just, yeah, and he's endearing, but, and, and maybe has a sort of charm to him, but really, you can get kind of annoyed with him, you know, and he's just, 
yeah, he's he's fun in that kind of way. You know, it's it's not really a a role model as such, you know. And he of course butts heads with the resident bureaucrat who never met a rule he didn't like. The character name escapes me, but he's played really well by Jeffrey Tambor. And yeah, the two of them just do not get along at all. The mentor, Professor Broom, is played excellently by the always brilliant John Hurt. There is a new agent in you know, brought into the fold, who's so, sort of the straight man, who's there for us to experience this world, you know, for the first time through, you know, it's, yeah, you know, you have this character who doesn't know anything about this world, and stuff is explained to him, you know, so that we, the audience, you know, can have things explained to us like that. Abe don't remember who actually, you know, does the, the physical stuff, but the guy is talented, you know, it... Stunt work and the like actually does take acting ability, or at least it's better if you do put acting ability into it, you know. You also see this with the guy in the Predator suit in the first two Predator movies, you know. There is personality behind those movements, and there is in this movie as well. And the voice, David Hyde Pierce. Could it be more perfect? It's just this, you know, aristocratic sounding British accent, and yeah, and, and he's a lot of fun as well. Just this, he's, he's telepathic and psychic in other ways as well. Then there is this, you know, the Liz Sherman, or Elizabeth Sherman, who can control fire and create fire as well. And she's played by Selma Blair, who does a fantastic job, because this character, when we meet her in the film, she she hasn't used the ability to, you know, to you know, the fire ability for a very long time, and it tended to be that when she got scared, it would just take over, and she she can't stand that, so she's worked hard to keep it under control, and it's sort of it's anxiety and pain that, you know, sort of, yeah, makes it happen, you know that brings it out of her control. So when we meet her, she has this sort of very delicate voice. She, you know, she comes off as someone who's been extremely anxious for a lot of her life. And, in spite of that, she is not, quote-unquote, just a victim. You know, it's, it's like with I can't even remember her name, but the, you know, from, from Dexter. Yeah, his, you know, his girlfriend. It's, you know, because you, you need to actually make a, a character like that interesting for us to, I don't know, relate to her or really see her as more than just a victim, you know. It's, it's important that she isn't just, ooh, be careful, you know, make sure nothing bad happens to her, you know. We want to feel it. We feel we want to feel something for her other than sympathy, and the film really does a great job of that. You know, it's in her acting and it's in the writing of the character, and in general, just the characters, the interplay and the arcs, and just the whole thing. These are great characters. You know, you want to watch an entire movie of them, and yeah, you you never get bored of it. I, you know, I've watched this film at least three times now. I'm still not bored by it, you know, it keeps being interesting and fun. The action is quite good. The action is great. You know, it's very... It actually somewhat goes back and forth between a couple of... It, the film, in general, just 
does a great job of mixing genres. But yeah, with the action, you have this sort of over-the-top superhero, you know, comic book stuff. You have this sort of cheesy stuff going on. You know, sometimes it's downright tense, you know. But, but yeah, and the film, in addition, mixes these gothic horror elements. You know, it's not... You know, when they got Hellboy through the portal, they were trying to get this, you know, outer dimensional god through the portal, you know. So you've got some, you know, Cthulhu-ish stuff in there, you know, sci-fi action adventure. There's, and, and it mixes them well, you know. The humor is quite good. It's it's fitting in amount, and the film sort of never really tries to squeeze a joke out of a scene or something. It all comes pretty naturally, although some of them are very on the nose. But you know, yeah, that that is this film. It's a B flick through and through, and enjoyably so. You know, the bad guys. Not only are they just really inherently creepy and, you know, the, the acting performances, again, are great. I don't know the names of any of them, though I will say that Cronin, like with the guy playing Abe, this guy, I'm pretty sure he's like a straight gymnast. The things he can do with his body are amazing, you know, and the character needed that because it would keep them from having to CGI some of this stuff. I'm not going to give away what he can, you know, actually physically do, but it's quite impressive and it really does make you feel like this guy just isn't human. You know, there is no way those movements are coming out of a living, breathing, normal human being. And yeah, you know, so th there is that air of supernatural something to him, you know. And in general, there, you know, that in the film works well. but. Part of what makes the villains work really well is that you don't see them all that much, you know, like... Yeah, there, there are stretches of the film where you don't, you know, you don't have scenes where you just see the, the villains just conspiring or something. Each time you see the one, one or more of the villains, they're doing something, they're forwarding their plan, you know, and... You know, this... You know, so, yeah, they're not overexposed, and the, the mystery is, remains intact, and just, yeah, when you see them, they're getting stuff done, you know, sort of. They, they seem like they're quite capable, and, yeah, you know, you get to thinking, you know, yeah, how, how are they going to be defeated, you know, it's going to be a struggle. Part of what's fun with Hellboy as well, and I've heard that this goes for the comics as well, which I haven't read a single issue of, about 60% of the time, it's him getting beaten up. You know, he'll throw himself right into a situation, not thinking about the outcome, and yeah, he gets his ass kicked. Repeatedly, and he's just still just barely makes it out on top, you know, so there is that aspect to it as well. This is not just some super powered, you know, dude who can just do anything and always gets by without any kind of issue, you know. He takes slightly more of a beating than he dish dishes out. The effects are great, you know, even, I mean, the film is by now seven, almost eight years old. They hold up really well, you know. Part of Part of doing good effects is realizing your limitations and working within them. You know, you if you don't think you can do something realistically, shoot around it, plan something else, whatever. Don't do it. You know, if you don't think it'll hold up to scrutiny, just don't do it. And I, I'd say this film lives up to that criteria. You know, everything you see feels real, you know, and it's a great mix as well of CGI and practical effects. You know, there, I don't know, there are maybe a few things where at least I can tell that, you know, this was done like this, but 
If you're not looking for it, I don't think you can see it, and it's certainly not distracting. It's quite well paced, you know, the amount of time spent on characters and backstory, development of relationships and of the universe and the creatures involved, all quite fitting, you know. I suppose one could argue that maybe the ending is a tad abrupt. I don't know, even that, I, you know, and it certainly fits. It, it's definitely the kind of ending that this movie needed. You know, this type of movie. Yeah. The locations and such, well, maybe I should talk briefly about the it's, it's also quite well filmed and well edited. You really get a sense of Hellboy's superior strength, agility, and speed to, you know, normal human beings that, you know, you know, because essentially it's Ron Perlman who's just perfectly cast as well. No one, no one else could be Hellboy. I, I just, I, he's Hellboy. You know, you, you just need to, you know, paint them red. By the way, they did a great job on that as well. You know, this is a movie that has a lead who's red. You know, just like, I don't know, the darkish, yeah, whatever, red. You know, like blood red, essentially, all over his body for the entire movie. You know, that needs to work. You know, if people are laughing at it or saying, that's just makeup, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, so, and, and it really works, you know, and you feel for them, you know, when, when there's conflict, you genuinely, you care about him and what happens to him, so they did great on that, but, yeah, you know, it, I suppose that more or less covers. The music is great as well and really fits the scenes and the, the tone. It's also quite dramatic. There are some nice surprises, you know, things you really didn't expect to happen in the, you know, do happen in the film. And there are times where you genuinely worry, you know, are they going to make it out alive, and how will they make it out alive? Yeah, I believe that's it. Excuse me. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.